Um, hello, Internet. Dave here from The Cool Story Show with... Aaron Corbett. And we're here with another Talk Who. Today we're going to talk about episode two of season eight, which was titled Into the Dalek. Um, watch this the Holy other day. Holy shit, Dave. It was, it was pretty amazing. Um, this was... This was uh, we, we talked about in our last episode um, how I didn't think... I didn't think Capaldi seemed that dark. Um, fuck was I wrong, because he's, he seems, he's a lot darker in this one. Yeah, um, so let's, obviously, of course, before we, uh, we talk about more of this, it's, uh, spoilers if you haven't seen the episode, so please make sure that you stop now if you haven't seen it, because we don't want to ruin anything for you. Because we will ruin every single part of this episode. Um, Dave, let's just start with, let's explain the basic premise of what this one was about. Because I, when I read the title, Into Dalek, I was thinking that was a metaphor. It was not a metaphor. No, the, the episode is, is literally about the Doctor and uh, a group of people going into a Dalek to try to fix it. Or try to see what's going on, because apparently this Dalek has now become good. They actually get shrunk down and sent into a Dalek that is... Um, not quite a prisoner, but um, kind of a patient that these these soldiers have uh, have, have uh, in the, on their ship, and uh, it's up to the doctor to go inside and figure out why this Dalek is good and why he's talking about destroying all the other Daleks. And as I'm sure you all know, Whovians out there, the Daleks are the big badasses of this Who universe, and I would say probably like oh, the ultimate en- enemy of the Doctor. Uh- Probably one of the, I think it's the oldest enemy, and it's one of the ones that they can keep bringing back through Doctor and Seasons, and it just, it's, it's got such continuity with the show. And I gotta say, every time I hear a Dalek say exterminate, I just freak out. Every time. It never uh, fails. One of my favorite moments was, um, was back in Tenant. Uh, I forget the episode, but the Daleks had kind of taken over the Earth, and uh, they were flying over Germany. And uh, the Dalek goes, extermine Groot? Like, like in a different <laughs> oh, yeah. language. That, I, rem- I remember that. That was, was a good one. But anyway, back back to the current episode. A um, couple of cool additions to this uh, this episode. We had um, uh, Samuel Anderson who played Danny Pink. Uh, actually, really good character. He's I just like he's a he's a teacher, a new teacher who used to be a soldier at Clara's school, and he was hilarious. He was hilarious. Like he wanted to ask Claire out on a date, and she kept hinting and hinting and hinting, and he just fucked it right up, and it was so funny yeah like when he's banging his head against the desk and she's standing outside and he's he's trying to think of like proper things he should have said and i think we can all relate to that i gotta say clara killed it jenna coleman killed it in this episode i think she she was right on par with capaldi acting wise like she was so likable she was so watchable whereas like the last episode i didn't think she was quite there she really she really blew me away this time Okay, um episode two with capaldi has he warmed up to you more or are you still getting used to him I like Capaldi. I'm, I actually think he's darker in this one. And I, I, I keep throwing that around, darker. I'm, I'm starting to get annoyed with myself even saying this. But he's different. And, um, no, yeah, he's way more uh, to the point. He's not nice like Matt Smith's doctor or Tennant's doctor or Eccleson's doctor. To be honest, he's kind of a prick, which that's okay. That works because I've never seen a kind of an asshole doctor before. And he really is. He constantly makes fun of Coleman. He constantly makes fun of everybody else around him and he doesn't really give a shit. No, he does, but like not to begin with anyway. Like there, there's that scene in the, in, in, into the Dalek where that guy is getting attacked by the immune system. And it's like, he doesn't try to save him. He just throws him that pill to try to, to try to help them as a group. And then after he's he's vaporized, you know, he's like, he was already dead. I was trying to save us. It's like he didn't even try to make an effort to to go through that. No, he didn't care. He literally said he was already dead. There's no point in all of us dying. Yeah. So if he dies, we can just get away. And that's pretty different for the doctor to do. And when he falls, they fall down into the protein pit with... Um... Funny, funny point. Second episode of Matt Smith, when he first started, they ended up inside of a star whale getting dropped into like the mouth of a star whale. Oh, yeah. And Matt Smith and Amy, po- Amy Pond... Uh, get covered in in shit and it's gross and second episode of capaldi same idea companion doctor and some others get dropped into the pit of uh in this giant creature that they're stuck inside of. i just thought that was funny do you know what annoys me too about sometimes with tv and video is we saw them got dropped into this pit of goo and then miraculously a couple seconds later their clothes they're, are all they're perfectly like, dried fine off and dry yeah like i know you could argue that they went through that um that tunnel that had the heat vents to dry them off but uh, it, it's just something that that extremely bugs me in a show um, so we talked about Capaldi, uh, what about Coleman? 
you mentioned that she kind of killed it in this episode. No, oh, she was great when she made that guy ask her, or, or when she made, um, what was his name, Danny Pink, ask her out. I thought that was hilarious. That was really funny. How it was kind of told through, the whole start of the episode actually was cool, how it was almost told through flashback. Kind of in a way, because the doctor went to get coffee, disappeared for three weeks, ended up on this ship having to try to rescue a Dalek, uh, came back to get Jenna Coleman three weeks later with coffee, but the whole start of the episode is kind of, it's told back and forth, like the doctor, and then it jumps back to Coleman, and then jumps back forward to the doctor, and then jumps back to Coleman, I thought that was cool, and even the little part with, um, with uh, Clara and Danny Pink, um, how, you know, he's, he, he's pissed because he didn't ask ask her out and he's like i should have just asked her out i should have said that's a great idea and then it jumps back and you see how he totally screwed it up and then like jumps back to him and he's like and i could have just said that and it would have been awesome and then it jumps back and he totally fucks it up again and clara just gives does nothing but give him hints um and it's also kind of nice too to see clara not in love with the doctor and now she can actually like focus on other things besides the doctor like other maybe love interests or something like that um i also think it's funny kind of going back to what happened with um kind of amy pond in the beginning of Matt Smith's era, like, he kind of, as we saw in episode one, he went out to get coffee together, but then somehow he disappeared and left her there and didn't come back for three weeks. He had to test the new Taurus out. He had to take it to the moon, and he was gone for, like, three months or yeah, something, so and got... he left Amy again after they saved the planet from the, um, the hell were they called? Atraxi? Yeah. And um, Patient Zero. Uh, yeah, that was funny. Um, just bringing up the Tardis, I gotta say... The interior of the TARDIS that Capaldi has, this is my favorite it's, interior. It's, it's it the is same as awesome. Matt Smith's, except he puts books and chairs and stuff around to make he, it more cozy. And he's got the round things. Like, he's almost made it his home now. Like, he's accepted it. It's, 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 it's like that second iteration that we had with Matt Smith. The first one was whimsical and kind of weird and kooky and whatever. And then after he lost Amy and Rory, it got very, like, clean, sterile, like a, like a regular like spaceship you'd think of inside. And then with Capaldi, it jumps another little bit and gets a little bit darker and a little bit... Like you usually said, there's a leather chair, there's bookcases, there's like a chalkboard with all kinds of crazy doctor stuff written like on it. scribbling math and... It's my favorite TARDIS, I think, so far. It's my favorite that I've seen. And they changed the outside of the TARDIS a little bit, too. Like, the windows look a little bit different. I don't know if that was just me that notices that, or... Oh, the outside? Um... They're, like, lit up a bit different, the windows, than we've seen previous, I think. They might have done that. I can't confirm that, but they might have done that. Confirmed. The windows are different. Do something about it. Exactly. Um, okay, so we, we talked about that. Now let's let's kind of talk about the episode in a whole. So they get shrunk, they go into the Dalek, and we actually, for the first time, get to see, like, what is inside a Dalek and how it runs and how it operates. And um, I was surprised to see how the inside of a, a Dalek is conveniently laid out so that people can get around in it really easy. Yes. <laughs> I, I actually think if you pause one of the screens, I'd, I'd have to find it. I think there was stairs and a ladder. <laughs> Little, like, literally. Yeah, somewhere. It's I'd, so simple for all these little this little team to get around inside the Dalek. Um, did you like what the inside of it looked like? Did you have any qualms with how they did it? Or? It was okay. It wasn't anything like miraculous. I really liked seeing the actual Dalek creature big with the little doctor trying to talk to him that was my favorite inside of the dalek moment everything else was just kind of it was it was just i don't know it was indist if you were to just look at a scene it's totally indistinguishable from a hundred other doctor who sci-fi tv show movie scenes where they're in a spaceship it doesn't look anything special um but talking to that mass of the mutated dalek that was cool i, I really like that yeah um what did he call him uh capaldi called rusty 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 that's he always has great names for things like his companions, like Handles. And Are you okay, Rusty? Talk to me, Rusty. So they, they kind of get into a confrontation after he heals the, the nuclear leak. Well, yeah, because the, the, the Dalek is good and saying how he should destroy the other Daleks. The Doctor fixed this leak in his, uh, I don't know, reactor core. That was causing cortex. radiation poisoning. And when he fixes it, the Dalek goes back to wanting to exterminate everything. And what does the Doctor say, Dave? Um, there is no good Dalek. There is no good Dalek, and it, that, that this just proved it, and it didn't matter. And this blew me away. Clara just slapped the shit out of Capaldi. Like, slapped him. I'd never seen a doctor get slapped by his companion. Nope. That was awesome. He deserved it, too. Well, because he was reveling in the moment that he was right. And he didn't give a shit that, like, people are going to die now, and, and they've already got somebody killed because of this, and, and he just completely it, that's a perfect example of how the doctor can lose touch with 
what he tries to stick with, which is, which is his more human side or the humanity of a situation, because it's so easy for him to forget that, you know, he's not, well, he kind of is almost a kind of godlike, but he's got to try to keep himself grounded, grounded, which is exactly what Clara did. Clara smokes him and snaps him out of his little ego trip. And, you know, he said, you know, I fixed the Dalek, but I'm going to do something better. I'm going to, I'm going to try to make it a good Dalek. Um, and we also had the confrontation between the two of them where they kind of mind melded something. Yeah. He like broke some wires out of the Dalek's innards and melded together. And it was cool to begin with because the, before the Dalek had said that he was good because he saw the birth of a son and how it was, um, it, it, resistance was futile because life constantly prevails no matter how much the Daleks destroy no matter how many suns they burn out uh thousands because the doctor keeps count um it doesn't matter because life just keeps going forward and the Daleks can't stop it so this Dalek finally decided there's no point life life is just going to go on why do I bother why am I going to bother constantly trying to destroy everything I should destroy the Daleks but it only turned when it saw how much hatred the doctor had for the Daleks right yeah, and then the, the, when he was in the Doctor's mind, he was trying to convince him... The Doctor was trying to convince the Dalek of, look at how beautiful the, the universe is and the stars and things. And then he, the Dalek saw past that and saw the pretty deep well of hatred that the Doctor has for the Daleks. And how, you know, how much they've destroyed and killed and how much trouble they've caused the Doctor. So that really just made the Dalek hate the Daleks more. Which is what the Doctor was trying to avoid doing, because he wanted to make a good just, Dalek. Just a good... But he failed. Yeah. He didn't make a good Dalek. The only thing it saw was hatred. The only thing it reasoned with was hatred. No matter what, no matter what point of view the Dalek sees it from, it just sees hatred. Whether it be hatred for the Daleks, hatred for the Doctor, hatred for something that's... I think that's all they can see, yeah. no matter how that might be. Now, I want to talk about something that happened in this episode that blew me away again, was Missy reappearing. You know what, Dave? We didn't talk about this a ton in the last episode. We wrapped up. Um, just to throw back into deep breath, um, uh, something happens to the android. He dies. At the end of the episode, he wakes up. He's talking to Missy, this kind of eccentric British woman um, in a garden. Who claims that the doctor's her boyfriend. Who, who says the doctor... Yeah, he, yeah, he says the doctor is her boyfriend. Um, the android asks, how did I get here? She doesn't really explain. She says, welcome to heaven, and then just dances off into the distance. And then in this episode, we get something almost exactly the same. One of the soldiers who sacrifices herself to try to change the Dalek's mind. Because uh, they want to make the Dalek good. And one of the soldiers sacrifices herself. So the antibodies of the Dalek come to attack her. And she's basically dying. But then she opens her eyes and, ooh, she's sitting at a table in heaven heaven air quotes we don't know what the hell that means with missy saying oh do you want to spot a t and the scene ends it's like 10 seconds long i don't know what the fuck it means now what, what we saw at the beginning of this episode is the doctor actually saved um uh journey blue from being d uh destroyed by by the dalek ship they were running from the dalek ship yeah, through the asteroid pulled boat. her through through like a time capsule lock thing and then she awoke well he Curtis. well she was about to die and he materialized the tardis around her just in time to save her, which was pretty awesome. He's done that. I think he's done that before in the past. He's done something similar to that kind of thing. But, but. The, the circumstances that happened are the same with what's happened with Missy and Heaven, though. So are these people actually dead? Ooh. Or are they just being transported to an alternate reality where she exists or whatever, whatever place it so is? So does she not exist or is this? No. Well, she has to exist in some capacity. It's just whether whether it's a like kind of a mirror image of, of her mind or whether it's an actual physical place like that she takes them or transports them. And we still don't know about her relationship with the doctor yet. Besides the fact that she said, you know, she's uh, he's her boyfriend. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, I'm still confused in a good way about Missy and whatever the fuck heaven is supposed to mean. I don't think we're going to see anything about that probably until the last three or four episodes. I'm sure Moffat will just uh, will just have a little a little taste of that in every episode, and he'll just he'll uh, he'll 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 be teasing us with that, blow us out of the water like he always does, more or less. I hope so. Um, what didn't you like about this episode? Um, Was there anything? There wasn't much I didn't like. 
I have to say. Um, like I said, the inside of the Dalek was a little bit boring. Um, as always, though, all the all the uh, all the actors that played there, all like the soldier guys, they were all good. Um, Danny Pink, who I believe Samuel Anderson played, he was good. Uh, of course, Jenna Coleman and Capaldi were awesome. Um, no, not not a lot. I didn't. Not a lot. I didn't like about this episode. One thing I really did like. Uh, sorry, Dave. I'll ramble on for two seconds here. Um, is the doll? This was the coolest looking I had ever seen. The Daleks, like they're just rolling into that ship, blowing through everybody. There's sparks. There's explosions. They keep yelling "exterminate" with their glowing blue eyes, and they just keep moving forward. And they really looked really cool. Um, some of the shots were just incredible. Like the there's a hole blown in the door, and you can see the Dalek on the other side staring through, and um. You know, cinematography-wise, lighting, effects, this was, I think this is probably one of the best episodes I've ever seen. Maybe not the best, but it really looked like they, they knew what they were doing. Like, their production value in this was really good. Um, I didn't like how, after this huge kind of fight with the Daleks, kind of how quickly it got wrapped up with that other Dalek going rogue. Yeah, yeah. You know what That I mean? ended it off pretty quick. They, they did only kill, the, he only killed the, the Dalek, the good Dalek, Rusty, only killed the team that was aboard the uh, the ship, though. That's and then the big Dalek ship that was hovering outside took off. Um, I also kind of felt like some of the supporting characters, like um, uh, Colonel Morgan Blue, was, was relatively okay in his position, but I felt like he could have had... Michael Smiley. Michael Smiley. Yeah. I thought, a... I thought it could have been a bit stronger. Yeah, he was okay. He was like your atypical... General, commander. Sergeant, sci-fi, soldier. Kind of one note, nothing great. Um, uh, what about how the doctor refused to take um, Journey Blue with him when she asked? I think that makes sense, actually. Because weirdly enough, soldier. because she's a soldier. And he said, he said, if only you weren't a soldier. But why does that matter? I think there's parts of what the doctor used to be that are still pretty prevalent in his mind. He just can't connect exactly with what's happening right now. Just like... He didn't really. He like he was just ha- he was just happy that he was right about the Daleks couldn't be good. And after Clara snapped him out of it, then he wanted to do one better. He had to make the Dar look good, which is more of like what we're used to with the Doctor. So I think he's now. He, it's just harder for him to kind of grasp the concept. Like like the question he a- he asked Clara at the start of the episode, "Am I a good man?" She didn't really have an answer. None of us really had an answer because we don't really know this Doctor that well. So far, maybe he's all right. And by the end of the episode. For me, I think Clara says it perfectly. She says, I don't know if you're a good or a bad man, but I think you try to be good. And I think that's what matters. And that's what I got from Capaldi. He's not necessarily a good guy, but he is trying to do the right thing. Well, maybe he's just trying to find who he is. Because t- right. t- touching back on episode one, you know, when you know he's talking about uh, with the robot swapping out the, you know, the broom part so many times, it, do, is it even the same thing? Maybe yeah. that's what he's struggling with—is trying to figure out like, what am I? Yep. Prob- yeah. I think I think probably he is. Um, Any final thoughts, concerns, questions? I liked I liked it visually too. I think you touched on that. Like it, it did. It looked great. It looked great. It just looked killer. Every scene looked fantastic. Even the scenes that were just in the school with uh, with Danny and. Uh, with Danny and Clara, I thought looked awesome. Just well shot, well acted. I thought, um, I think I said this before, but Samuel Anderson did really quite well as Danny Pink. Even though he played a little role, he was kind of funny. He was likable. I hope, I hope he's going to be around more. I think he's coming. Back. I think he's going to be around because if we're going to see Clara's life when the Doctor's not around, oh, and that's another quick point to touch on. I think he's going to start Take. leaving her for longer periods. It almost seems like, well, either leaving her, or maybe she's going to start breaking off and leaving him. Because she's trying to get on with her life, maybe. Could be. Yeah, that definitely could be. Even though she's kind of agreed from the last episode that she would help him, maybe she's still having a hard time coming to grips with what's happening. I think she is having a hard time. That's why I think she's trying to go after uh, like men, Danny, in her real life. Because now she doesn't have you know, her boyfriend doctor to run around the universe with like she did with Smith. Yeah. Which... Necessarily, like, let, let's say the doctor steps out and she's a gorgeous woman, and you go run away with her and cruise the galaxy, and then it's replaced by, like, Margaret Thatcher. 
Yeah. That's, uh, although poor comparison to compare Margaret Thatcher with, uh, Peter Capaldi, but you get, right. you get, I, I get it. I you get, get it. the gist of what I'm I saying. get the gist of it. Well, this has been episode two. Uh, into Dalek. Uh, remember to head over to the Cool Story Show on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our page to keep up to date with all of our other content. We're going to have a, uh, a podcast coming out, uh, not tomorrow, but on Tuesday. So stay tuned in for that. Uh, me and Dave will be back every Wednesday to talk about Doctor Who. Uh, next week, it looks like we might be talking about Robin Hood. I'm pretty fucking excited about that because it looks like it's going to be one of those zany into the past episodes which which is cool i want to see yeah i I definitely want to see that futuristic spaceships to robin hood uh also remember to go to our facebook page the cool story show and like to keep up to date with everything also follow us on twitter at the cool story show.com uh i'm aaron corbett you can find me on twitter at a corbett 48 and i'm dave meyer at dave meyer 7 um i hope you enjoyed the video and uh cool story show out Talk who?